this presentation is brought to you by the letter G. G is for gas that makes neon glow. Now, back in the day, horses were a popular way of getting around. But you know, you, your horse, and that sign would take forever to catch up with each other. So signs became bigger, bolder, and brighter. So, you know, you've probably heard of Route 66. The mother road, the valley, we had our own. Route 60, cut through town. The, the landscape was dotted with neon signs beckoning weary travelers to come have a good night's sleep, get ready for another adventure. Most of them are gone, sold for scrap. A few survived around town and became icons of the valley and a nation. Some didn't survive quite as well. And, you know, I've developed an odd, yes, love that place. So I've developed an odd hobby. I call it sign chasing. And so I drive around town, and out of the glimmer of my eye, I'll see something. It could be repainted, repurposed, or just admonished. Beyond recognition, mangled, lack of lighting, faded paint. Who knows what it was supposed to be? But you know, they all tell a story of when car culture was on the rise. Phoenix was an exotic destination. And the merge of those two really helped create where we are today. Now, as you're driving around, you never know where you're going to find a sign. It could be in that warehouse that you've just passed. It could be that wall in someone's backyard that you just drove by. You never know where you're going to find a sign. I'm always amazed. Sometimes a private museum filled to the brim with neon. Once I was out chasing signs and I stumbled upon a place that is dripping with Arizona history. When you talk about the Antioxidant Valley, you talk about baseball, spas, local flora and fauna, and it's rarely ever lit. But there's even a more rare chance that we have to try and save this gem in the desert coming up in November, and then becomes another arduous task. Some become celebrities and fall with a thunderous boom. And unlike Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses and all the king's men can put her back together again, but it takes a lot of public support, and there's still more that's needed. I just found out today $25,000 more to attach the lady back to the motel sign that's standing in Mesa. So some are curated from an empty lot and saved by museums, but find themselves now between a hill of dirt and a dumpster, unsure of what their future holds for them. A honeymoon haven becomes fodder for a flatbed trailer in South Phoenix full of 50 years of pigeons. And you can tell when you get near it. Some tell the story of a sign that cost as much as the building they represent. And it's that last vestige of Americana. And it's hanging on by merely a thread. And then a chance meeting with a local celebrity. Now, not a sports player, not a newscaster, not a film star, a sign designer. His signs tell a story of Arizona, of a city, a state, that was getting ready to legalize gambling. So this was built, and it didn't pass. So instead, it became a local historic music venue, becomes a, the moniker of a community recently threatened by current modernization of a block. This we almost lost. Luckily, it still stands. 
Now, in this year of Centennial, please join with me as we try and preserve our history, including that recent, that modern history that really makes us who we are today and, how, and really that roadmap of how we got here. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.